Good afternoon and welcome to this Leadership Summit tonight presented by the Global Young Professionals, a new initiative by the World Affairs Council of Greater Houston to be officially launched on February 24th. Join us on this day to learn more and to meet more young professionals like yourselves. Registration will open soon. Visit wachouston.org to reserve your spot today. Tonight, we're delighted to host Enzo Ochoga and David McMillan tonight, who will be glad to answer your questions um, on the second part of the event. Um, if you'd like to open up your video and microphone for this section, please send us a note using the uh, Q&A button. Um, all questions are welcomed via this feature chat as well. And before we begin tonight's Leadership Summit, uh, we have a couple of reminders. The World Affairs Council uh, celebrates its Super Bowl week program with an exclusive chat with Houston Texans President Jamie Roots on uh, February 4th. The following week, on February 9th, we welcome Her Royal Highness Princess Rima bin Bandar Al Saud, the current Saudi Ambassador to the United States on February 9th. More information on these and other fascinating programs we have this year, please visit wachouston.org. Last but not least, uh, you all get a surprise gift this evening. Uh, it will be announced at the end of the event. And now on to our speakers for tonight. First, we have David McMillan, a Houston, uh, Texas native. He graduated from Suffolk University in Boston, Massachusetts with a bachelor's in marketing. Shortly after graduating in 2010, David landed his first job with BMC Software, where he began as a business development rep and eventually promoted to an inside account manager. David spent four years at BMC and later went off to join a startup company, CS Disco, where he sold e-discovery software to litigation firms. After a year, David would join Advanced Applications, incorporated as Director of Sales and Marketing, selling Sage's ERP solution to the mid-market. In 2019, David started creating videos on LinkedIn with advice to help others who might be struggling in sales, the interview process, and hitting their own personal and career goals. After setting the inject an objective, excuse, after setting an objective to create a minimum of one video a week, David has created a solid following and has helped coach and mentored many. Next, we have agile coach, mindset speaker, and compassionate storyteller Enzo Ochoga. Uh, she is a leading voice in women empowerment and innovation. Her passion dwells in inspiring women to rise above limiting beliefs and harness their powers within. Born in West Africa and living in America, Enzo has overcome adversity against all odds. A survivor of abuse, shame, and depression, she gathered strength from within to reinvent herself while maintaining her authenticity. She shines a light on both women and men alike, encouraging them to be the best versions of themselves and to live life audaciously and purposefully. Enzo, would you please do us the honors of starting us off? Thank you. Hi, Jahan. You need to breathe and drink water. That was so, so <laughs> long, right? <laughs> Hi, everyone. It is so good to be here. I am so honored to be a speaker and just being part of this, this cause right now. So thank you so much, um, you guys. So as you know, I have, or if you notice, I do have an accent. Um, and this means that I speak a few languages and my native continent is Africa. All right, so today I am going to be talking about one of the most important subjects that has to do with leadership. And this has to do with leadership and the philosophy of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African word and I will explain it to you guys as we go along. One of the biggest assets for me in my career and in the career of so many people that I have been opportune to meet and work with, my mentors, my friends, and even children around me is the asset called relationship. Building relationship is one of the biggest assets we have in leadership. A leader is completely invested. A good leader, I should say, is completely invested in the relationship they have with the people around them. And a leader has three things, in my opinion, that should always, always, always matter. One is purpose. A leader has to be purpose-driven. 
And number two is people. That's the community and the team. And number three is growth. Without those three, we cannot, we, the leaders, you and me cannot thrive. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story because I love stories. And there is no company or individual that does not depend on stories. The stories we have past, current, and stories to come build us and matter. So here is the story of the philosophy of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African word. Yeah, so once upon a time, okay, a scientist went to study the habits and behavior of a particular town in Africa. And then this scientist, you know, was having a good time watching the kids play. And so he went and bought some candies in a particular town and brought it back to the town that he was studying human behavior in Africa. And he put the candies in this very pretty basket and he put it under a big tree. So he went to the kids and say, hey kids, so we are going to play a game. And this is what the game is about, right? You're gonna all run to those tree the moment I say now, all of you will run to the tree. And the first person that gets to that tree and grabs the candy or grabs the basket takes everything for themselves. So the kids were like, oh, okay, they were excited about this game. And the scientist was watching. So he said, one, two, three, now. And you know what happened? All the kids looked at themselves, held their hands together and ran together as one to the tree and got the candy and shared that candy. So this behavior kind of surprised the scientist. He was curious and he said, wait, because you know, life is all about competition. You know, that's really what, the standardized, and it's good, competition is good. We need competition. I'm not saying it is not good, but it kind of, it kept the scientists curious and he, he was pretty much, you know, curious and he asked the kids, can you please explain why you stopped, held your hands and you all ran together? And then the children went Ubuntu. And he was like, Ubuntu, can you explain? And then they go, how could any one of us be happy if all the others fall. I'm going to repeat that. How can any one of us be happy if all the others fall? Ubuntu, the quality of life matters because of us, because of you, because of me. The number one platform I believe we should work on is our mind. And our mind has to connect with other people around us, the team. If you're looking for a job, like right now, we are in a time of the great uncertainty. We're all forced to transform, adapt to different things, new things on fast pace, whether we like it or not, whether, whether we are ready or not. But we need people. We want to get information. A lot of people are going back to school. Maybe some of you are adding certifications to what they have going on right now to thrive. A lot of people are listening, searching what's out there. Oh, let me listen to YouTube. Let me, let me get on, let me check every community. How do I engage with other people? For example, like on LinkedIn, my, one of my favorite platforms um, for professionals and professionals in every field, not just professionals in suits. Okay. Professionals in any field. Because there's something about that. The power of community is an asset. You meet someone that is not like you, not someone that you know. You meet someone online through community, through engagement, because they add value. You learn from that. You take it in. You explore. You leap. That is what leaders do. Leaders leap. You know, like take that jump, reach out to people. Without people, we don't have leaders. Without community, without community, how can we be? Even if you, as simple as having like just kids, 
like if you think about kids when they're little and you know well kids are kids right but kids are little they're holding on to a toy and maybe one kid is holding on to a toy and then another kid wants to get the toy the other kid doesn't want to share it then there's a problem right because the me 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 effect has a very detrimental effect in any group but when we start to share when we start making things about we when we start asking questions, when we're bold in failing and unafraid to fail forward, when we understand that being afraid is not the problem, but being afraid is an asset. When we see ourselves as human, leadership happens, something happens in us. I wanna read you guys a quote that I really love. If your actions inspire others to dream, if your actions inspires others to learn, if your actions inspire others to thrive, then you are a leader. And that is what we should be about. That is what you and me need to stand for. So as a professional right now, and if you're listening and you're wondering, okay, how can I get to the next level? My advice to you from experience and the experiences of others that I love and respect is reach out to people, find a mentor, a good one, not just any mentor, find a mentor, find a mentor, reach out to people and ask questions, get uncomfortable, put yourself out there, be seen in the scene. There's so much information right now at our fingertips, but be intentional and selective with the quality of community you want around you because your environment matters. Three questions, who are you? What do you want to change in this world? You have to have a purpose. Purpose is not just about money. No, actually, purpose is not about money. Purpose is about service. If you don't know your purpose yet, that's fine. We've all been there. But let me tell you how you can find your purpose is by building relationships with people, exploring different things out there and see what aligns with who you are. Solve a problem. I'm not saying change the world, but changing one person or being impactful and adding value in life, oh my God, it does something inside of you. It really does. So get out there, build relationships, get involved, reach out, ask questions. Don't do things by the book. Don't do things because people are telling you. Be authentic and do the things and follow the tools, the tips that are out there that aligns with who you are. What do you wanna change? What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? Be honest with that and pursue the career that aligns with who you are as a person. That matters a lot. And just in case, just in case, if you want to meet people, maybe in Houston, maybe from different parts of the world, or you wanna be in communities that whatever field you're in, if science, tech, it doesn't matter reach out to me. LinkedIn is there. Try LinkedIn. And I mean it, if you're not a social media person, that's fine. Find a lot of groups out there. Google, there are groups out there on Meetup, different things that you can get involved with. Read and learn about what is happening in the world. People are changing and spending time and with their families and understanding that if things, being on robot mode and not building relationships, 2020 and 2021 has proven to us that without humanizing the way we work, we are nothing. So the things that matters are the relationships. Be purpose-driven, people matter, build relationships, ask yourself 
and be authentic with, with your answers. That is so, so important. And growth, be open-minded. That matters a lot. And so I guess that's what I have to say right now. And please reach out, reach out to me. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to connect you with other professionals that will be there for you. So thank you so much. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, and so that was great. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was a great, great, you know, inspiration of leadership and what it's all about. And I'm going to build on that too, because, you know, I want people to understand that the power of self-belief and determination can get you to the mountaintop. And there are a few things I'm going to talk about today about being passionate about what you're doing and believing in yourself, um, not taking rejection personally. And also, you can be a leader without having a title over your head and always find someone that's a coach to inspire you, to bring you up when things are tough. So let's talk about being passionate because oftentimes we're told, you know, just do what you're passionate about. And that is a good message. But we also have to think about, you know, how we provide for ourselves. And I'll tell you a story about me. When I was graduating college, you know, I didn't know really what I wanted to do, what my passion was. I didn't have experience in IT. I didn't have experience in oil and gas, but I knew where my skill sets were. And I mastered on my skill sets, being engaging with people and my degree in marketing and understanding trends. So when I got back to Houston, I was like, well, where do I start? And you have to find what your skill sets are, build on them. And when someone gives you an opportunity to work at their corporation, when you're out there searching, well, where do I go? And you find a company or two that you believe in the mission and you believe in the product you're selling or whatever it is you're representing, that you get in there, you master your skill sets. And if you're lucky, you'll have a foundation of success that helps you build passion over time. Because sometimes we don't have passion at the beginning, but it's also something that you can master when you have the right environment that vouches for you, that trains you, that supports you and wants your best interest. And, you know, look, sometimes when we're in this situation, we're gonna get rejected. You know, we're gonna apply to certain places or have certain goals that we want to accomplish. And, you know, we're gonna get the door slammed on our face, but you can't take that kind of rejection personally. In fact, you have to surround yourself with people that are going to give you that helping hand when things are, you know, rough. And the good thing is that you can control your mindset, right? When we get rejected in life and it happens, whether you're applying for a new job, whether it's a sale or a promotion you're seeking or moving up in the ladder, you know, it's not sometimes a knock on you. If you're doing things right, if you're being ethical, if you're, if you're going by the books, rejection should never be, well, you know what, I'm just not good enough because that kind of mindset manifests itself and it, and it prevents you from being the best version of you. So when you get rejected, it's often appropriate to take a step back and say, well, where and why, right? Is it because the timing is off? Is it because maybe a credential I do not have that I need to obtain to move up? So it's not necessarily a knock on you as an individual. It might be the certain things that are just not in an alignment. And that can be approved upon. That can be mastered. And another thing is that you have to think about is, you know, you can be a leader regardless of what your title is. You know, people sometimes think that, hey, I can't be a leader. I don't have that manager title or CEO title. Well, here's the deal. You don't have to have that to be a leader, right? You have to believe in yourself. You have to, you know, have empathy for your colleagues. The Boy Scouts have a story that, you know, when they go into a campground, it's their initiative to leave it better off than where they found it, which means that you as an individual in the company you're at, you know, regardless of whether you're happy or not, you know, someone else is going to eventually fill your shoes, right? So being a leader and having a positive legacy means that, you know, you do the best work possible. You leave it, you leave that foundation for success, not only for yourself, but also for the ones after you, where you hand the baton over. Because, you know, it's, it's like a life circle, right? You, what you do for yourself also impacts the other people that might come after you. And you want to keep that momentum of success for everybody else, not just yourself. It's good to have your goals. It's good to have your self-interest. 
but you also have to think about everybody else. And that's what leaders do. They, they think about themselves, but more importantly, they think about the people, everybody else around them and how they can foster a community of success, a community of appreciation. And so everybody can hit the same goal. And another thing is that I often tell people it's so important to have a coach. You're never, you know, you're, you just have to have one no matter where you are in your stage of your career, because a coach can help you, you know, learn things that you might not see while you're in the day-to-day -day tasks. They can look at things objectively, constructively, and bring you up when you feel lost. And I often tell people, look, it's important not to have too many coaches have one or two that you really trust. Because what happens is, is that when you have five, six, seven coaches, you sort of start getting different, you know, thought processes going on in your head and you can get very confused. So it's always important to have two trusted coaches. And I often suggest that they don't work with you, right? They're, they're at the outside looking in. So there's no objective biases going on. So always have a coach. They will serve you well. They will bring you up when things are tough. They will give you perspectives that you might not, you know, see because, you know, we always say hindsight's 2020, right? But having that coach will, will, will help you be 10 steps ahead of the game. So, and, and with that, I'm just going to open it up to questions. Hello, all. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, we're going to begin with Q&A right now. So uh, Enzo is joining us again. And um, so as a thank you gift, we want to give all of you a ticket to join our conversation with Jamie Roots uh, next week on February 4th. He is the president of the Houston, Texas. So you will find the details on your inbox. And now uh, onto your questions. If you would like to use your camera and video, please send us a note. We will make it happen for you. If not, uh, you, can, you, you can send them using the Q&A feature. So the first one, comes from David. Uh, and so, uh, can you help us with your camera? Okay, can you, you, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yes, okay. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So this is uh, for David. Okay, uh, being a leader, how do you balance taking on responsibility and achievements versus delegating jobs and opportunities? Well, Wait, what was the question again? One more time, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so how do you balance um, delegating versus taking responsibility? Well, you know, you have to take responsibility even when you delegate. You can't just, you know, be off the hook because you delegated a, response, a, a task to someone else because in a team environment, you know, you're just as much on the hook as, you know, the, the folks that work with you to, you know, foster that success as a company. Um, you, you're in it as a team and it's just like football, right? You can't just put the whole emphasis on the quarterback. You have to have everybody playing their plays to be successful. Otherwise you're going to lose. And, you know, the coach who does delegate the plays has just as much at stake as the, the players on the field. So everybody is in a community together. You know, you have to be a custodian of, you know, ownership, for not just things that you know you might delegate, but also for the, the teams that you manage. Thank you. We have another question from Elian. This is for both. Yeah. When you say mentor, who has been uh, a mentor for you both? A parent, a professor, a boss? That's a very, very excellent question. So for me, um, my first mentor, not because you know I'm just saying it, I'm being <laughs> honest, is my mother. Um, my mother um, being coming from a place that women had very, very, um, had a very rigid role to play in society. My mother was the only female at the time that rose to the ranks of the chief justice of her state. And um, she was that woman that was a beacon to pull me through and mentored me and to really let me know that it doesn't matter where you are in life, you have to treat others with respect because people make you who you are and that's the truth and then the next thing are children children are the biggest and greatest mentors ever whenever i go and i and, and i volunteer and just teach kids 
I get inspired and my friends inspire me, your friends, your surrounding, your environment, if it does not play a role of mentorship, get out of there. So yes. And then there's so many mentors out there that I've never met um, before that do not know who I am. But yes, they inspire me because they inspire me to dream, to be, and to thrive. So my mom, children, and my friends. And you guys too, like seriously. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think we all have different mentors at different stages of our lives, right? For different things that we experience. Because, you know, we all face different challenges that are unique. And so one mentor in one situation might be great. And then another you know, situation might face, you might need another one. So for me, though, it's my dad, for sure. Um, he's been a great support of mine, you know, just like into your mother. So for me, my father has been a great mentor of mine. And, you know, when I first started at BMC Software, one of my coworkers actually was my mentor to, you know, get to where I am. But he also later became my manager. But um, he was really integral to my success. And I thank him. And we're good friends now. Um, after all these years. So uh, he, he was a great inspiration for me when I, cause I was lost, you know, it was, it was an overwhelming time in my life where I did not know the things I was selling very well. And he was a great inspiration to say, Dave, just hang in there. It's going to get better. And I needed that at the time. So I thanked him a million for that. And I later worked with him and then, you know, now we're just good friends, but it's, it's always important to have various mentors throughout your career because they will provide really good value in different challenges that you face. Yeah. Thank you. Thank we you. have a follow-up question from Ishika. This is, um, I feel like oftentimes people struggle to get a mentor. Other than reaching out through social media, how would you recommend approaching people to make a connection? I'll Other than go. social, oh, sorry, go ahead, David, you take it. Well, I mean, look, it, it's, it's tough to, to, for one, look, social media has been a blessing for me because I've been able to out, to reach out to so many people out there and, you know, people, and I, and I always, I always solicit my services. Hey, if you need a mentorship or coach or help solving a problem, I'll be more than happy to help. And some people take it, some people don't, but when you, other than social media, you, know, you look at your friends around you, who, who is it in your circle of friends that you trust that have had similar experiences to where you need coaching or mentorship and can be an advocate for you. you know, sometimes you have to search with, from within, right? If you can't find it you know, from social media from a complete stranger, right? So that's, that's one way of, of going about finding a mentor. So I guess for me, um, just adding on to what David, and who, who asked the question, what's the person's name? Ashika. Ashika, how are you? I hope you're doing okay. And I hope this is adding value um, to you. And thank you so much for that question. That question actually is very personal to me because there's so many um, not so good mentors out there as well. And we need to be very selective, right? And we need to be absolutely sure that the mentors we attach ourselves to really, really represent you know, where we want to be. So for, for, I would say that in terms of mentorship, if you cannot, because you also have a, a situation where you have, and I wrote it when he was, uh, when David was speaking, where um, one was, you know, you could have horrible mentors. Number two is, what, if, what about if you don't have friends in your circles, because you, in your circle, because you do have situations in different countries or in different groups where like really your friends or, you know, there's really no one to be that, you know, that's mentor. So what will someone like you do? Or what would someone like me do? Or if I'm shy to reach out to someone in social media, because, you know, that can be weird. I tell you the skill, trust me. But what can I do? This is my advice to you. Take a lip. A leap. I would say my African accent gets in the way, so sometimes I'll <laughs> pronounce things differently. Sorry, I speak like five languages. Um, so take a leap. And what I mean by that is right now, because of COVID, because of quarantine, I'm not sure the um, situation of COVID wherever you are right now. And so this is what I'm going to say. Social media, get on LinkedIn, 
get on LinkedIn. If you need recommendations, um, it depends what, what, um, where's your field of, you know, what field, what are you looking for um, in a mentor? Like what field are you in? David is here. He does mentorship. I do personal development um, growth and for businesses and women. I have very good recommendations for amazing people. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some giveaways on that. Um, you know, you guys will get to know it. I'm going to um, share it here. So if you need um, mentorship from, for someone that, that really just speaks to anyone on every level to guide you, I will recommend Dr. AJ Minai. He is on LinkedIn and um, he's a very powerful force. And those are the kind of people you should be looking for. So get on LinkedIn, find mentors, reach out to people that are very accessible. I know we have assistance. But this is why this platform is here. You see, Viri, where's Jahan? Jahan is here somewhere. These are the guys you should reach out and be like, hey, you remember that person that spoke and did it? Please, can you reach out? Then they can reach out and then we can, you know, give them some access to certain things. You know what I mean? So that after this situation, I mean, this beautiful conversation we're happening right, that is happening right now, I need to stop and drink water, but let me pause. Mm. So that after this beautiful conversation, you can actually have access to a mentor that is right for you. I hope this helps. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Um, as when I email you uh, the details for the event, I will include Jahan's email, mine, David, and Enzo's. So yes, I mean, let's stay in touch. This is what this is for. And, uh, and join our launch party on February 4th. Uh, this is what this is all about. And um, this wonderful question from Kelly, she asks, how to find or discover your skill sets in the first place? David, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. I mean, look, you, you, that's a good question. And it has its unique challenges, right? But I feel like if you are, if you've had practice out there, maybe you got a job at a young age, or you start developing and start identifying these things at a, at a young age if possible. Um, and sometimes, you know, we don't know, right? We're in a situation where, hey, you know what? I just, I'm lost. And you, it's good to understand what your passions are. And sometimes you just have to throw yourself in the fire, right? And try different things. And if you're given that opportunity to do that, you will identify what those skill sets are through experience, right? The best way, though, to identify skill sets is either through your youth and your understanding what you're good, what you don't, what you like, what you don't mm -hmm. like, or actually experience in the workforce. And if you're given that opportunity to have, you know, if you're young, like if you're in your 20s, it's easier to do multiple things at different times and try different things. And eventually you'll identify, well, I like this. I'm good at that. I like this. I'm good at that. And then you can master on those unique skill sets and build upon it as you grow your career and then really hone down on those skill sets yeah. and master it. I would you agree. Like to, yeah, I, would you like I, to answer as well? Yeah, I'll just add to that. I mean, um, he said it. So one of the things is how do you find your skills? When I was, I took like, I went through like three degrees and finally figured out which one I wanted. And especially coming from a family where it's really, if you're a doctor, lawyer, you, you're either a doctor, lawyer, or a disgrace to the family, like literally. <laughs> so, you know, so um, I did, I took general studies. That was the first thing because I really could not figure out what to do. And the truth is not... Four-year universities are not for everyone. Um, education is so important, but education without walls do matter. And just to add to what David said, right, you really have to put, explore. Try different things. Um, maybe something you're like, oh, okay, let me see how this goes. Try it. Maybe you like it or maybe not. If you don't like it, toss it or, you know, just keep it. Try something else and, you know, see how you feel. You know, sometimes you would be in a situation where you really love it. You're like, oh, this is it. <laughs> I've been waiting for this all my whole life. This is the right thing. And then the next thing you're like, okay, this is not me. It happens. And don't be afraid of people saying, oh, you jump all over the place. You move from one career to the other. Don't, don't be, don't, don't feel like, you know, you're just going all over the place. Before you get to the center, you have to move around and you will find your center. And the only way is to explore. As David well said, if it doesn't work, toss it around and then put, um, 
yeah, put yourself um, in a place where, you know, there are people that have, they're just like you and people that you feel are thriving right now. And you're like, okay, let me, let me get to know this person and learn from this person. And maybe, and maybe again, connections and maybe relationships will be built. Connections will happen. That person might be the springboard to where you need to be. Explore, try it. Don't be afraid. If it doesn't work, it's fine. You're human. Thank Take you. a risk. <laughs> Thank you. I think we would have two more questions from Jennifer. So she asks, how do you ask for more responsibility in the workplace to improve leadership skills and, of course, climb up the ladder? Can you repeat that, please? So how do you acquire or request for more responsibility in the, in the workplace to climb up the ladder and okay especially if you're not is she saying under the context i hope she can hear me the context of um of maybe not having um enough challenges or you want to get to a place where you can get promoted and get opportunity yes yes that what yes How do you, david you hit that spot and then i'll hit on it Deal? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Jennifer. So what you want to do is always when, when you're meeting with your first of all, when you're first, you know, meeting with your bosses on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, you want to identify really clearly what your end goal is, right? Mm -hmm. What what is your two, three, four year career path that you want to achieve? And as you progress, you know, and you have these meetings with your boss, you should be presenting them, look, I accomplished XYZ. And I did these things successfully. And what you what they're gonna do is they're gonna say, okay, great. So as you're you know achieving these things, what can we add to challenge you more? The last thing you want to do is be in a in the in a in a situation where things become complacent. Because when you're complacent, it just doesn't go well. You want challenge. You want to be in an environment where they they see and identify your accomplishments and they give you more responsibility. And if they're not doing that, you have to ask for it, right? By presenting the things that you do accomplish and hope that's it, great. This is, because look, here's the thing. People are not always thinking about us, right? We think about ourselves, but they also have responsibilities at hand. So, you know, sometimes things get, you know, overseen in the daily rushes and pulls of, you know, their responsibilities. So you have to identify them, identify it and, and, and present it to them. So they're reminded, wow, you're right. You did accomplish all these things. You did do all these things. Let's add some more challenge. And hopefully along those conversations, you have already identified, you know, you know in five years, I want to be the manager of a team. Well, what are you doing today? What are you accomplishing today that it's going to help you take those baby steps to get to the mountain that you want to reach, right? And if you constantly take a journal or, you know, log those accomplishments and present them as, you know, you're progressing, then, you know, the ability for you to achieve your goals, I mean, it, it should be just a no brainer. You have 100% faith that it's going to happen because you, you're always asking for the next challenge, but you're also presenting it, you're reminding them, and you have an end site. You have a goal that you've already set for yourself to, to reach. Yeah. I like that a lot. Make your get seen in the scene. Um, let build build relationships inside the workplace. Do not yeah. be in the politics of things. So yeah. that way you are in the good books in the organization you work for. And what that does is, you know, that would be like a good bridge, you know, for you to kind of climb you know and have and and share you know like some of your where, where you want to be um in the company share where you know how you see the landscape of your career rise in 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 the organization and that really really uh, matters so yeah have clarity you know uh, make sure you don't get involved in any of the politics at work you know uh, build the relationships between leaders. Let them see your skill set. Let them see. Let them see your strengths. Like those things you're so good at. And then challenge yourself. Um, ask to get involved. Even just you know to be like get involved in a team that is working on another project that you don't have anything to do with. Maybe just be there and learn. Um, that has really helped um, a lot of people. And do not be afraid to ask questions at all. So yeah, David said everything. He really did. 
Well, you, you built on it. You did build on it really well. Thank you. We have a question from a college student, uh, Mr. Jeffrey. So um, his question is how to mix your hobbies and your interests and then shoot that to your career. Yeah. Let, okay, um, I can see here the question is, I know my skill sets. I just <laughs> want, want it to be clear um, so I can, um, I know my skill sets. I am a finance major in college right now and have always found finance come easy um, for me. So my plan is to work in the world of finance and earn decent living. As much as I love finance and numbers <laughs> though, I am more passionate about football, he said, particularly in the UK, he said, well, hello. Um, how do you feel about pursuing a career to fund your other hobbies or interests? Sorry for the long question. Um, I had to read that so that way I can really understand you are in the same boat with so many people. Um, we all have different things that we love to do, you know, and I, if, if, I believe in work to fund your dream. So you're working, right? Right now you're getting your finances, fund your dream, fund the other things that you like, you know, invest in that, you know, just make sure that that don't just drop the ball. Do not drop the ball on that because, okay, I mean, one of my friends, my one of my best friends, who is a VP of a very big company here in the US, loves to play this, the piano, right? But that, that was what he wanted. He wanted to be that person. But what he's doing right now, shout out to COVID, is really investing in that. And he's really sponsoring and investing in that right now. But if he didn't have the capital, you know, because of his placement right now to invest in that, he will not be thriving, in my opinion, in it right now. So I believe in in keeping that balance, you know, keep that balance, fund your dreams and keep, don't drop it. Don't drop it. You don't have to stick to one thing, please, please. Huh? Life is too short. You can do anything, not everything, but do it. Thank you. And the last question from Carla. She asks, what are some suggestions for leaders when feeling discouraged in their situation? What is David, go ahead. Yeah, so when, when you're feeling discouraged, it's so important that you surround yourself, and I alluded to this in my presentation, with people that can bring you up. Because, you know, life isn't fair sometimes. And we're sometimes faced in situations where we are just aren't motivated, right? Maybe it's the politics at work. Maybe we are in a career that we realize over time, you know, this isn't for me. And we feel stuck. So it's so important that you find some soul searching. You do things that, for one, you're passionate about outside of the job that can maybe be a stress reliever, like exercising, playing golf, whatever. But more importantly is surround yourself with a mentor, align yourself with one that can lift you up from that spot that you're in, but also friends and family that care for you, love you, and want your best interest that can really guide you through those challenging times and give you objective advice. You know, there's no real clear blueprint for success. So when you're facing those situations, having someone there for you that understands you um, knows your shortcomings, knows what, you know, triggers you to rise above challenging times is imperative in, in battling that situation. I'll give it to Enzo. You know, this is why I say every workplace should have a success coach. Every workplace, every workplace should have a success coach on pilot mode, <laughs> you know, for, for people that need that psychological safety to be motivated. In schools too, I see some schools now um, doing that. They do have, um, I'm not talking about the regular counselors. I'm talking about an, an actual success coach that is there with you all the way. I wish they had it. And during my time, I'm like 150 years old, as you can see. Um, but anyways, we all do, we all do need mentors. And you did say previously, David, that 
at every stage of our lives, we are a different version. In a way, I'm adding my twist, but at every stage in our lives, we are a different version of ourselves. So at a particular stage, there's a mentor for that. And mentorship is finding the support someone that will be there for you or finding the support group. It goes a long way. You see, human beings, we are biologically wired for connection. We are social beings. Absolutely. We need each other to grow. So yes, find a support someone, support team, read. If you're not a reader, don't worry. I have friends in good positions that are not readers, but that's fine. Be an audio learner, a visual learner, um, books, podcasts, um, so many things. Hey, YouTube, you have YouTube. Come on, come on, YouTube. You know, University of YouTube. Find things. Um, don't fill yourself with um, garbage. Be, you know, filter. If you, if, you, if you, trust me, if you take in garbage, garbage will follow. So consume. Good point. Things, exactly. Consume <laughs> things that inspire and motivate you. So like David does a good job with that. Um, I met with David yesterday. No mask because it was online. I respect what he does. I have friends that do that. I do that. Um, so yeah, find a support someone and support team. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so we wanted to thank you, David and Enzo. This was wonderful and very insightful. And um, we wanted to thank everybody for joining us. And Johan has one last thing to say. Well, um, once again, thank you both for joining us. The uh, your energy and you played off so you saw each other so well. It was a, a great experience for all of us. Um, and so once again, I, I want to thank you and everyone who joined us today. Um, we'd like to invite um, all of you to a uh, to as uh, to be our special guests for our uh, February fourth program with Houston Texans President Jamie Roots on leadership. So once again, this is going to be a, a great opportunity for. For all of for all of you all to uh, to enjoy, and uh, we'll take care of the tickets, and we will send you all emails with your registrations and tickets, and nothing else you need to do but just attend the program next week. And uh, once again, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Barry. Thank you, David, and Enzo for a wonderful program uh, to kick off to kick off our global young professionals this year. Yeah, thank and you, uh, thank you, Barry. And follow yeah. our page on LinkedIn. Is a uh, global young professionals, Gary Houston. So uh, this video will be posted there tomorrow as well. So feel free to share it. Feel free to email us and see you soon. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Stay safe and stay healthy, y'all. You too.